What's going on, guys? Justin from Practically Tactical here, and I've got Mr. Steve Fisher. He's getting better at concepts. It. That's right. Jeff's got got it rolling. But uh, you know, we're out here at Midwest Industries today talking about Steve's rifle in an earlier video. But here's another product that you had some design input on. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. Uh, earlier this year, I contacted uh, Sneaky Bags about doing a low-profile bag. Everybody has some sort of tactical, I guess, how to make a backpack tactical, I have no clue, design idea or whatever. All I wanted was a bag that was low profile, didn't scream gun, didn't scream cool guy shit, didn't have molly all over it, and all kinds of stupid stuff you don't need that screams gun. Dudes take these things, they throw them in the back seats of their cars, or trucks, do whatever, and, you know, realistically, dudes know what they're looking for that are stealing shit. So, right. I just wanted a low profile, low profile bag that I could take to the office environment, take on vacation, go anywhere with, from the office to wherever that would not scream, oh, it's a gun bag, stupid, that holds and organizes everything that I need for a quote unquote, either EDC bag, a gun bag. I wanted organizational capabilities. I didn't just drop everything in the bottom of the pack, but I still wanted it to be able to hold specific sensitive items that maybe I don't want people to know what's really in there. So. This is what we came up with. Uh, several color variations. There's a black, there's this kind of, there's a navy bluish color or, or an off blue, and then there's this kind of grayish bag that I really like personally because the coloration of this actually changes pretty good with the lighting, so it blends in pretty well for things. Um, you know, about the only thing on this bag that screams anything else is the daisy chain, you know, you know the bungee cord retainer for a jacket, sweat jacket, no big deal. Every bag out there pretty much has these. So, great. Some people will change the colors of these, of the shot cord to give it a little bit of a different look. One of my other bags has different color pull ties. I changed them out to like a red or a green just to customize them for myself. And it's, you know, but this is the way the bag comes standard for them. It's $145 right now online through sneakybags.com. Getting to the features, uh, exterior of the bag, padded straps, fully adjustable, some back padding, comfortable pack, Nalgene water bottle holders, or whatever bottle you prefer, Hydro Flask, Nalgene's, whatever. It will hold them. It's deep enough to get that full bottle in there and still have good purchase. This exterior pocket, the main flap, right here, has just a mesh general pocket for throwing in whatever you may need quick access to. They have a single D-ring located here to fit either a small or medium pouch. So for this, general purpose stuff, pens, pencils, what Small boo boo yeah. snivel kit, you know, OTC meds, stuff like that. It's there. The back of it is a Velcro packed, you know, just a full Velcro pack for hook and loop. Uh, this particular one I've got set up with a Blue Force Gear Dapper 10 speed pouch. This will hold magazines, flashlights, multi tools, all the little things I want to have accessible to me. Um, I have set this up with a Velcro backed holster before just to throw a pistol in there so I have a spare gun, mags, flashlights, it all goes in there. It will take anybody's accessories, not just sneaky bags, obviously because of the hook and loop. Right. So if you have a personal favorite or you already have pouches laying around and don't want to spend extra money, cool, throw them in there. But the beauty of these are, these start to hide all the sensitive stuff. The larger you know, the pouch you go, obviously the more coverage. Definitely. So it keeps all that stuff out of plain view. If I need to get in here, get some meds out, get Sharpies, pens, pencils in the park, wherever I am. You know, no. If you're taking this bag with you with the kids. And I think one th cool thing to note is even this is out of the way of this pocket. That's one thing that, you find is key. they often do it to the side of the bag here so that you can't actually administer this pocket. And that's nice that that keeps that out of the way too. Yeah, so. that was one of the big points that we had was to move the bungee retainer system inside this area instead of keeping it looped all the way across the bag because pretty much it's stupid, then you can't access this. Exactly. Well, what's the purpose of having if you can't get in there? So that's kind of that feature there. Uh, on top is just a standard, everyday kind of EDC quick accessible pouch. For me, generally in there, it's a spare pair of eyeglass, you know, my shooting glasses. You know, I keep an extra set of Rudy's in there, uh, either shooting ones or just my standard daily wear ones from them. So that goes in there, cords, whatever, just yeah. any usual shit you want to throw in the bag. So the main zipper compartment, once we get rid of the side lockdown tabs, but yeah, it gives it an ability to just compress a little bit smaller. Yep, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I would call this like one of those 48-hour packs. You know, you could yeah. definitely fit a, 
a good amount of stuff in here. To <clears throat> the bag itself is around 1,600 cubic inches. So that's a lot of space. It generally falls in that 48 hour to 72 hour bag. Um, once I open this guy up, one flap, and we'll start here. So you notice three D rings. Um, added the sneaky bag pouch assemblies. These are sold separately. They come in a five pack, various colors, red, black, mesh, a, a clear vinyl like map type one. So th there's a lot of things that these can accomplish. For me, generally when I set these up, I'll use these as my med bags. So I've got additional trauma supplies in here. Uh, this one currently is set up with just some little stuff for, for a demo. It's full of like goo energy drinks, you know, extra ear pro, whatever, just to show the versatility of it. So anything you can have that you need just small, immediately accessible goes in there. The beauty of these on the back is that there's a small like side 50% pouch. So keys, money, all goes in there. These start to add to the overall cubic capacity of the bag. So you can literally take a 1600 cubic inch bag, turn it into almost 1800 just by adding these pouches. So they're designed to stack, flip out of the way, the medium size one. Then I have two individual mesh compartments. I use these a lot for travel. If I want to throw like an extra pair of socks in there, you know, these pouches are great. The larger ones for adding, you know, roll up a shirt in there, a pair of technical pants. I have them for travel with me. I drive a lot. I'm on the road three, four days at a time going, you know, different coasts. I like to have a change of clothes accessible with me just to grab, take the pack out of my truck and go. So these two mesh pockets are great. Just again, general purpose, whatever you think you need to put in there. Flip this around. You can see how much depth is really in this bag when you get into here. It's approximately 19 inches long. Depth is approximately about six, seven inches of depth in there. So it's quite a bit of height. Again, taking these, like I just came from a class. So, hey, full of mags. It's like bag of mags, dude. Right. I got them. I throw them in there. I can take it in my room with me. I'm not taking gun cases in and out of a vehicle. If I go into here, next one, one of their medium pouches again. This one has a full-size Nighthawk 9mm 1911 in it, complete with an RMR and an X300 and a Raven concealment holster. So it's kind of just grab and go. It's there if I need it. It's out of view. Nobody's none the wiser. Get rid of that. Again, the larger packs also have the 50 percenter on the back. This is where it really starts to get cool is that it is a Velcro Pals Molly webbing. This allows you again to, if you have any of your favorite Molly type pouches that you want to add to this for either IFAX, tear off IFAX, magazine carriers, laptop bags, whatever you want to put in there, it will go. This is one of the sneaky bags M4 mag type pouches. It'll hold two M4 mags each, barrel lock, so you can put just about anything else in there you choose to. It doesn't just necessarily have to be for magazines, radios, com equipment, whatever you may need. Set it to where you want it, throw it in there, everything's covered, and you can literally start just opening this up in public, grab little things that you may need, again, keeping the sensitive stuff, those items, out of view. Also notice I've got one of the Therm, uh, cell bolts. yeah, the cell bolt holders from them, that's really cool for me to keep extra batteries on hand close by, I've got them, I have to just pop this thing out, grab my batteries, replenish them. You know, lock it back down into place, and I'm all set. So, yeah. versatility is what I was looking for. Yeah. Keeping it very a low pro kind of covert bag, which is a cool term to use, I guess. I just wanted a bag that didn't scream tactical because yeah. there's nothing tactical about a freaking backpack. And I wanted it not to scream gun bag. You know, once I start layering stuff, this this is an insert from LBT. It's a padded one that I've had for a while. Keeps my laptop, a bunch of my charger cords in it. I'm like, yep, that's cool. Throw that in. These just accordion over with it. Close that up. That's it. I'm done. Got everything I need. Not a lot of shit that I don't need and don't want. I don't need to attach Molly all over the outside. It supports about 20 odd pounds of weight pretty well if you need to go that heavy. And for me, that this is what I feel is probably the best bag going on. 1000D Cordura. My kick AM zippers. <clears throat> yep, I mean, kick AM yeah, kick AM zippers. It's a number 10 zipper across the top. Eights here, obviously, because they're not as hard use of a zipper at this point, but still very rugged. 
Uh, the number 10s are lockable at this point with just a TSA lock to go through the holes. It's, you know, if I really needed to lock the backpack for whatever reason, kids, things of that nature, I don't want them crawling through my sensitive kit before work or whatever your case is, you know, pop the TSA type lock off of it and you're set. No, I think like you said, I really like the gray man style of it. You know, it doesn't have the hook and loop all on the outside for your patches and all the molly. But it doesn't scream gun. Like you said, you can head from the office to Disney World right to the range with this thing. And, uh, it, you know, it maintains that level of low proneness without screaming, hey, I've got a gun on me or I'm carrying all this uh, cool guy gear. So definitely a well thought out pack, man. I really like it. I think it's really well organized, allows you to be organized as well. And yeah, I think again a screaming deal coming in at a screaming price. Yeah, so. like I said, it comes in about 145 bucks. The the additional you know D ring pouches they come in a five pack for approximately I think 25 30 bucks for five of the bags. It's like a large, medium, medium ish, and then a small kind of deal. And again, a lot of variations on those that you can have. Like I said, they're clear, they're black, they're blue, they're red. They've got just a whole gamut of accessories on the website that will interface with this bag. But also the cool thing is be looking for the next series of packs and bags coming from them that we're working on currently right now. They should be available by the summer and you're going to be pretty excited by what you see coming from there. Cool. So if they want to get a hold of this bag, where should they go look? Uh, sneakybags.com. That's the Sentinel pack. Available for order right now. The shipments are in. They're shipping. We've already had a couple of viewers I know have already gotten theirs. Post some reviews online of those bags, guys. So let everybody else know about them. Uh, you know, give good, honest feedback about it, what you like, what you don't like. There's always room to change or modify to needs. So it's not that big an issue. This was designed by me for what I felt I needed and some other people that I know that are using them. So far, the feedback that I've gotten from some of the other end users has been really positive. Organizational thing is the biggest deal for it for me. It keeps everything in pouches, not buried in the bottom of the pack or I'm fishing through the bottom of it looking for stuff and fighting through my other gear. I open it up, I accordion out the pouches as I need. And for me, with the pouches I like, especially is that I can label them. I can put a piece of 100 mile an hour tape on them, label what it is, or just Sharpie the actual bag itself if that's going to be a dedicated kit bag. Yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, if you want to find out more about Steve Fisher's training schedule, please go check out sentinelconcepts.com. You'll be able to see this bag out at all his training yeah. classes. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends if you thought we were putting out good information, and we'll see you next time.